Hello, my name is Rob Carlmark, and I'm a meteorologist here in Northern California for an ABC station. So if you're watching this online somewhere, uh, that's where I'm speaking to you from. But of course, what I'll be talking about is all of the chatter with an update that came out on Thursday, which was yesterday of this week, talking about Super El Nino. Now, let's just go back to the drawing board and start with the conditions that we currently have. This is something called sea surface temperature anomaly. And what this is, is taking a look at how warm or cool the top of the ocean is compared to normal. So there is a baseline and you can deviate from that in any given year. And you can see even at the moment, some places are cooler, some places are warmer, but we wanna focus on South America and the equator because what's going on is a true sign and signal of El Nino for the ocean surface temperatures very warm off the coast of South America, from Peru to Colombia, Ecuador, uh, and it starts to spread out, at least from its origin. And then over time, as we start to flip over into fall and then winter and spring, when it starts to fill in the middle of this basin, that's where we monitor El Nino conditions. So in any normal year, you've got your trade winds, you tend to see cooler water off the coast of South America, then it bubbles up, and you end up with a lot of warm water out on the other side of the Pacific. Well, when you have weaker trade winds, along with other things going on beneath the surface, you tend, up, you tend to end up with a lot of warm water from basically one side all the way to the other. And that's what we call a classic El Nino pattern. Now, what we tend to see, and it'll be different all over the world, by the way, is for North America, we tend to see wetter conditions than normal from about central to Southern California through the Southwest, and then also through Florida, warmer than normal conditions and drier, might I add, for the Pacific Northwest. And that's just something that we see not every single time, but more often than not. So there is a statistical reason why we tend to talk about El Nino uh, in this way. So what's going on? I just put these graphics in uh, from NOAA and other resources. And yes, that's in, in fact what we're seeing. Warm water off the coast of South America. And then this is what we call the Nino 3.4 region. Again, this is some inside baseball, but if you just wanna know what I'm talking about, and for the, those experts out there, uh, this is what we're seeing right in this spot because this is where we tend to see connections to how the atmosphere and the jet stream start to behave. Again, more often than not in any given year, you're gonna have stuff that just doesn't really add up to your typical El Nino pattern. In fact, some years you will not ha have it add up to that, but we start to see reinforcing things. Remember, that's the top of the ocean. What's going on underneath? Well, we actually have a way to measure this. There are ocean buoys that have sensors at depth so you can see what's going on. And underneath the surface, there is a lot of warm water that is transferring over. And then once it moves to the surface and then starts to move over with some of those weaker trays and just fills in that basin, these Kelvin waves is what they're called, really tend to reinforce where we're going. So knowing what's going on at the top, knowing what's going on underneath gives you a good idea of where we're gonna be in the future. If it is 0.5 Celsius or above, that is various stages of El Nino and the strength and intensity. If it's below, which we had three years in a row of this, we call that El Nino. So in fact, what happened this year is we went from El, or excuse me, La Nina all the way to El Nino, pretty quickly by the way, and now we're hanging out in this stage. 1.5 degrees Celsius above average, that's where we've been staying. And with all the computer models crunching with what you just saw, uh, we're, we're tending to have it hang out in this very strong to super stage. Now, I don't wanna get into the, the semantics of strong versus super. I'll just tell you anything above 1.5 is a strong one. And back in 2015, 2016, it was way above that, above two degrees Celsius. So. Just going back to that strong category where we really have a good uh, a number of years that have risen to that level. Uh, this is from NOAA and they've got the, you know, some of the hallmark years from 82 to 83, 97, 98, among others. And what they have seen statistically is that we tend to see a lot of rain and snow in those years stretching from the fall through winter and spring. And you end up in this zone right here where it tends to be much more noticeable that you end up with a lot more, either rain or snow. Now, it's gonna depend a lot on the snow because very often with El Nino, at least on the shoulder uh, sections of the years, you tend to have a lot of warm storms. So higher snow levels, uh, but those warmer storms can indeed hold more water. So you might end up with wetter storms that are warmer in the beginning. You'll have your snow in the middle and then warm and wet to end. So again, that's typically what we've seen in the past. Will this year exactly pan out? We'll have to see. Other things are happening in the background. The whole ocean basins all over the world 
are much warmer than they usually are, so that's a new wrinkle in the forecasting going forward. Now, since I'm a local weather guy, I do have to talk about our weekend ahead if you're watching in, uh, in our viewership area. Sacramento, the high today, 67 degrees. Just a nice day, folks. We talk about El Nino in these drier, calmer patterns because that's really looking down the road. In the near term, we're going to have a quiet weekend ahead, just some clouds drifting through. Look, I'm like you. I got stuff going on on a weekend, and if it's not raining on a weekend, I'm fine with that. But we're all paying attention to what's going on next week. Starting Tuesday night, we see a more uh, active pattern emerge. The real key to understanding what's going to happen in California next week is trying to figure out where the moisture is going to go. We've got a lot of solutions lately over the past two days that bring a cutoff low, which means that it's a low that's sort of wobbling on its own, going down the coast and then eventually working its way through Southern California. If I showed you this earlier in the week, we'd see a lot more rain in Northern California. So things are yet to be determined. There is some new information coming in that's changing the forecast uh, in, in a couple of big ways. First of all, we're dry through the weekend, that's easy. But starting next week, I do think what's guaranteed is that we cool down and we're gonna have periods of rain chances, but it's the timing and the amount of rain and snow that we will all be watching going into next week.